To understand viscosity, we really need to go back to thinking of our molecular nature of a fluid. Um, inside a fluid, you'll have lots and lots, zooming right in if you like, lots and lots of molecules all zooming around the place. Um, and uh, what we've done in the past is say that if we take a sort of clump of molecules that's big enough, uh, we can get an average velocity. And the average velocity um, would be defined at a point in space. V is a vector as a function of x and y if we're looking at a space involving x and y. Now let's imagine that these molecules in particular have an average velocity that's quite large in the x direction. So that's just V subscript x is quite large. Uh, let's imagine now underneath <coughs> another set of uh, molecules and they're moving around just as fast in a sort of random disordered sense but uh, when we take the average sort of of the clump of the of molecules they're going slightly slower at another velocity uh, I'll give it the same symbol VX but it's slightly lower velocity in the X direction now occasionally some molecules from the bottom group are going to zoom into the top group and bounce off these molecules and similarly some from the top group are going to zoom into the bottom group and bounce off them and so on and when they do that you're going to get exchange of momentum so momentum exchange between the two uh, groups of molecules and in the continuum model we're going to see that essentially viscosity is a measure of how good a fluid is at exchanging momentum between molecules up at one layer and molecules in another layer. So that was the molecular picture. What I'm going to draw uh, in the bottom part of the piece of paper is the continuum picture. Now here it's a fluid continuum. There are no molecules, there are no gaps. But let's imagine one layer of fluid and it's moving at the top velocity Vx which is high. That's this velocity up here of the top layer of molecules and let's imagine another layer of molecules uh, sorry another layer of the continuum underneath going slightly slower at Vx which is the lower velocity which is this velocity here. Now we know that at a molecular level these two layers of fluid here are exchanging momentum um, but in terms of the continuum uh, we have to think in terms of force and so on but of course a rate of change of momentum is just a force so what's happening is rather if you look at the bottom layer it's essentially got a force on it pushing it in that direction uh, from the top layer that is from the molecules that have come in from the top layer and there's an equal and opposite force or you can think of it as a shear stress uh, on the top layer from the bottom layer now this um, shear force or if we do it per unit area shear stress um, is proportional to uh, the difference in velocities uh, divided by the distance between the layers so that is actually just dvx by dy where y as we defined up here is the vertical direction and the coefficient of proportionality here is the viscosity so let's rub that out and put in the exact value uh, the shear stress is equal to the viscosity times the velocity gradient so, as I've said already, essentially viscosity here is a measure of how good fluids are at exchanging momentum between layers of fluids. And you'll find that gases and liquids are viscous because molecules are moving around. And that gives you an idea of um, how viscosity should behave. For example, in gases, uh, if the temperature increases and the molecules move around faster, uh, there's more momentum exchange, so the viscosity increases. In liquids, on the other hand, it's a little bit more complicated.